So, Dave just got a new 300 PRC in um, the Ruger RPR. So, I've uh, I've had an RPR for probably I don't know seven years or something like that. It was the very first Ruger precision rifle they made, and when I first got it, I was like, ah, it's a kind of a weird AR platform looking bolt gun, very heavy, but they said that it would shoot. And uh, at the time I didn't really have money for a custom rifle. So uh, I got it and it has proven to be just a awesome tool. I mean, it is always on, it always works, very consistent. So Dave, uh, he's been shooting my rifles for a while. We have a 300 Ultra Mag we do a lot of work with and uh, that 308, which is the, the Ruger RPR. But we did not have a big caliber in the RPR, so he went with the 300 PRC. Been doing a lot of research, and it looks like it's gonna be awesome. So uh, we have some factory loaded rounds right now that we need to uh, push down the barrel so we can get the brass, because components are hard to find right now. But as soon as we get that, uh, rifle sighted in, get some initial uh, stats on it, breaking the barrel a little bit. We're gonna push, hopefully, we'll see, fingers crossed. He's got a one in nine twist barrel, which is should be just fast enough, but we're trying to push the 245 EOL burgers. Um, I believe Dave named the bullet the dump truck. <laughs> so we're on a quest to create the dump truck load. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully it works out. Hopefully the bullet will stabilize and uh, we can get decent enough velocity to run it. I have a 300 Ultra Mag. I would run that bullet, but I have a one in 10 twist right now. Not gonna work. So um, yeah, we're gonna see if we can get it going out of the old 300 PRC. I have a barrel on order, so I might eventually get up into the big boy realm of uh, dump truck rounds. But for right now, we'll leave it to Dave. So anyway, that's what we're doing today. We just got to the range, checked in, and uh, I got a buddy card for Dave. <laughs> Actually, Dave got a buddy card for Dave. <laughs> so uh, hopefully, my my hope for this rifle is uh, that it won't be a whole lot of work. Sometimes it's fun to, to build loads and develop loads and things like that, but it'd be great if this thing just shot straight out of the box. Um, I've never had anything shoot factory loads uh, with an acceptable amount of accuracy for what I want to do with the rifle. So um, that would be insane if we could push these precision hunters out of this rip barrel and, and get some sort of reasonable accuracy out of them. But regardless, we're probably not going to be able to find any more of those anyway. So basically today we're just getting it on paper, uh, kind of breaking in the barrel and checking out this new Strike Eagle that he just put on here. Um, I've heard a lot about this scope. Uh, it's brand new. Not a uh, expensive scope price tag for sure definitely a uh, very reasonable amount of money to spend on a scope i think there's some around 700 dollars um, which for the features on this scope don't make any sense to me it's it's a 5 by 25 um, by 34 millimeter f1 um, scope so if the glass is good and it tracks true and you can get parallax out of it. 
I have no problems running a scope like that. I'm not biased at all. So this is a Vortex Strike Eagle. Um, on mine, I have a Night Force ATACR 5x25. So kind of curious to see how this thing's going to do today. But first time at the range with a 20-pound cannon. Very excited. We actually have a pretty awesome range. Um, very rare you run into anybody out here that's not just awesome. <laughs> Super nice people. But looks like everybody's shooting 22s and quiet stuff so we're going to kind of be out here making some noise so i feel a little bad about that but they just shut down the range for us we can go hang up some targets we're just going to stack them at 100 yards for now uh, just to get on paper and kind of see how this will group so no big deal kind of normal stuff up on the hill it looks like there might be one gong at 550 it looks like the spot is so if we can get this zeroed and looking okay uh, we'll stretch it out and see what we can do up there I forgot my stapler today. So we're using these push pins. Yeah, normally they have quite a few gongs set up out there. They have a couple rows that are missing. I thought it was for fire season, but it must not be because there's uh, there's still a couple gongs out there. So we got her set up. What do you think? How's she gonna shoot? Like a para. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna work good. I think so right too. Right out the box, 100%. Well, hopefully. I think so too. I actually have more confidence in this than uh, most guns you buy from the store. And it's probably just experience with this specific uh, rifle. Because I've had one for a long time and this is Gen 3 and it's supposed to have only gotten better. So if that's true, we'll find out today. We ran into some troubles the other day. He bought a, got a bipod off of Amazon and uh, that's not a terrible thing but this particular bipod just happened to not be very structurally sound. So we decided to take some JB Weld and just epoxy it to where um, it couldn't move because it was really floppy and loose and just didn't have very good tension. So uh, we JB Welded it, but at some point, <clears throat> I don't know if it was because of the heat or what, um, it actually sagged to one side a little bit so it's not sitting perfectly level, which in the dirt, you can reach up and grab one side and level yourself out. But uh, on a concrete table, not so easy. So I have old trusty here, also an Amazon bipod. Um, we started running Atlas a while ago and they're awesome, but they're also expensive. So we're not, we're not against using whatever works and this one works. So we're just gonna slap this on here for now and get some testing done. Okay, I think it's ready to put a round through. Uh, target on the left. Target on the left. Let me, uh, let me measure in your reticle here. Okay, so we need to move up nine minutes total. So there we go. So that should be it. We'll find out. So this is actually interesting. So this is the Strike Eagle. It's a push-pull. It's a lot like the, the Vortex uh, Viper. Or excuse me, it's, like, it's a lot like the Razor Gen 2. It's got the push-pull turrets on it, which uh, not my favorite thing in the world, but they seem to work, and you're not going to bump them once they're locked down. So I like that part. But we're gonna leave it like this right now and we're gonna check and see where we're at. Good. Yep. A little hot. Let's go 275. Okay, so that's where we're gonna group. All right. So we're gonna pull a quick velocity off of this. If my um, magneto will wrap around this thing, it's got a gigantic muzzle brake. Check this thing out. We're gonna slap this on here and see if we can get a reading. I just want an average velocity. I'm not looking for anything special. Like I said, we're reloading, so uh, it kind of fits. Strap it on like that, it might fit. Yeah, I think I can get it to clear. I kind of got to do a weird little, like move the spacer back to clear the muzzle brake. This muzzle brake looks like it comes off a 50 cal. It is huge. So I'm gonna just tighten this up real quick. Yeah, we're good, there's clearance. So this is just to get some initial data just so we can kind of reach out and touch some plates. Again, we have 60 rounds uh, and we're pulling the bolts out of them. Anyway, uh, we're gonna end up loading burgers. We're gonna try for that dump truck load as soon as we get this thing all dialed. So I'm gonna throw five across the chronograph, which might mess up point of impact and everything else. So uh, we're not gonna get too finicky on group size. Also, it'll see if our um, turret is gonna track true for us. So 
But well, finally got this on here. It might blow off, I don't know. We'll see, I'm a little sketched out about how I had to put it on here, but not the biggest deal, so here we go. Twenty-eight ninety-three. Twenty-eight ninety-three again. That one might be in the same hole. <laughs> so very first group, uh, Dave shot out of this gun at all, and. I said we weren't going to do it with the chrono hooked to it, but at the same time I thought, man, we're just kind of wasting rounds not doing it that way. So I uh, hooked the chronograph up to it. A little rinky-dink, a little sketchy, but uh, it read, I think it was 28.93 twice in a row, and then 28, maybe 75. I think this group is for factory loaded ammo out of a completely factory rifle. Um, with my friend Dave at the helm, wow, <laughs> just trigger punching fella. Man, uh, well, let's just take a look. Let's see what he got. Yeah. All right, so uh, on the board here, we have our first shot, second shot, third shot, which brought us into like the outer ring of the bullseye. And uh, these three were the first group with the magneto speed attached to it. So check this out. Not bad at all. I'm actually super, super stoked. Yes, this is a good day at the range. Um, granted, that's a three round group, but who cares? Like I said, factory rifle, factory loaded ammunition with the magneto speed attached to it. I couldn't be happier. I'm super stoked. Uh, I'm gonna grab that data and grab the bullets BC and everything, and then I'm gonna stretch them out to 550 and see. I do a ladder test with the scope, it's not, not, not a ladder test, but I do a box test with the scope, but we just don't have enough ammunition for that right now, so. But it doesn't matter. Who cares? The gun shoots. Yeah. Factory loads, man. I've never had a gun that shot that Precision Hunter very well, but this one just does. I'm excited. Good shooting, Dave. Or the gun is just so good. You can't miss. That you just can't. You can't miss. You can't miss. You just come stock like that. So far this has been super simple. So we just set up the rev stop, zero stop with this guy. And basically you just pop the cap off of the turret, uh, this little screw here. You just take this off and underneath there's this little uh, plastic, uh, maybe it's aluminum, this little round ring. You just drop over a journal and you turn it all the way the one direction. It says right on it which direction to turn it. Then you just reinstall your cap, orient the zero to the zero. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. For all intents and purposes, this should be zeroed right now. Um, we're actually not gonna shoot the paper again. I'm gonna range and just to see if we can, we're gonna reach out uh, to, uh, I think there's a plate at 550. Um, this is all just kind of winging it just for fun. But so far the gun has shot incredibly well. Zero recoil, um, feeds good. It's a little bit, uh, the bolt itself is a little bit stiff, but just like mine, mine was too. It just kind of wears in. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with the bolt, but once you get it in the lockdown, you just got to be a little bit more forceful with it than, you know, maybe a smooth uh, precision custom built rifle. But um, for what this thing's for, it's been it's been running awesome. So we're going to get a range. I built him a profile on my Sig Kilo 2400 and uh, he's running 2886 average. And I got a custom curve, apply ballistics custom curve for the bullet and which is a 212 ELDX and we're going to see if you can hit that plate. So first round on the plate at 550 with factory factory loaded ammunition. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's pretty good. Yeah. Now 550 is not the furthest thing in the world, but for for being not a hand load or anything, just literally setting up zero and sending it. I mean, a rifle should be able to do that. We all want it to be able to do that, but how often does that actually work? So, I mean, first shot center plate, that's set, number seven shot today. We have not, we've still not grouped without the uh, magneto on there, but it doesn't matter. So yeah, there you go. There's it does, five. It does what the RPRs do and that's shoot straight. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah the RPRs, man, they seem to work really well. I'm stoked. Um, not a lot of the days at the range go this well. But so far, uh, this Precision Hunter ELDX uh, 212 
because they might have a, a 220 for this one, I don't know, but this 212 for sure through a factory RPR is money. And then this Strike Eagle tracks up, tracks down, uh, made corrections for zero. It corrected perfectly, uh, set up the zero stop, ran it up to, to nine minutes, which we'll go, we'll go run it out a little farther, but ran it up to nine minutes at 550 center punch the plate we'll run it back down right now and check our zero and then we'll probably be done here uh, this was the the first group he shot it was a 0.7 inch group um, again with factory loaded ammo and this is the, the seventh eighth and ninth round out of the gun um, factory loaded precision precision hunter hornady eldx 212s super stoked on that so we're gonna get out of here we wrapped it up here uh, for the most part already back in the truck and we're gonna go hit them out and see if we can stretch your legs a little bit and see what these 212s can do. Scope track true all the way up all the way back down no problems. Held zero. Seems like a seems like a good to me so yeah we're gonna go see if we can stretch your legs but like I said we gotta get the rest of our junk back in the truck.